Thanks for joining us. My name is Tiffany Thompson, and today The Vocalist Magazine gets to sit down with the singer, songwriter, and producer, Ian Kelly. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for joining us. So, music has always been a part of your life. Since the tender age of 13, you've been doing music. So, how can you tell us about what ignited this fire? Yeah, well, I guess music is, is you know, is a part of everybody's life, uh, whether you're conscious of it or not. But, um... When I first heard Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix, I, I just I bought some purple jeans and I wanted to be I wanted to be them, you know. I wanted to play guitar and I don't know. It was just something that I don't, I don't know what really drew me to 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 that. But there was a vibe and there was there was something I I really connected with right right there and then, and so that's how it started. But then. My older brother had a band in the basement, and he had uh, drums there, and I started to play on, on his drums when he wasn't around. And so that's how I, I you know, got to start playing music, and uh, yeah, I'm still just fiddling and tinkering with instruments and mics and preamps. And I mean, I'm, I, I hope I'm getting you know, better at it, but still, it's, it's the same process. Absolutely. And who would you say Ian Kelly was, and who have you become throughout your musical career? Hmm. I think I'm. I'm. I'm just. I think I'm pretty much the same a person, but I'm. I'm more maybe relaxed now. Mm -hmm. I don't feel all that pressure I, I, I used to put on myself. Um, it's my fifth album, so I'm. I'm way happier because I think happiness come also comes from uh, um, from managing expectations, right? So now I just don't have high expectations. I have high hopes, and, and I'm always working towards, you know, goals that I, I, I want to reach, and, and, and I have dreams, and, but they're way different today than they were, you know, 10 years ago. And, and, and I think, yeah, I'm putting out an album. I don't, I don't really care how many. Well, I don't. I care how, how many I sell because, you know, that will... Um, let me know if I can make another one afterwards and, and hopefully I'll get to make another one because I enjoy making music. But um, I don't like check like uh, where am I in the charts and how many copies have sold on iTunes and, and you, you know. It for and, the love rather than the validation. Yeah. Well, I, and I guess I always did it for the love, you know, but I just... But anyways, it's hard to measure success these days. You know, how many Twitter followers or how many albums you use. Like some, some people have, you know, thousands of Twitter followers and then they put on a show and there's 20 people there. So it's hard to measure it, you know. So I guess you just got to do what you feel is right and, and hope for the best. So congratulations on your fifth album, Super Folk. Can you tell us what, how does it differ from your four previous albums? Yeah, um... Well, hopefully I'm, I'm writing better songs now because, you know, I've, I've, I've been doing this for a while. And as any, anyone in any field, you know, if, if, you, if you practice and, and, you, and you work at something, if you're not improving, then there's something wrong. Maybe you should think about doing something else. So hopefully, you know, it's my best album yet and um, not as good as the next one. Ah, I like that. But um, um, I think... Uh, if we compare it to all these lines, the the previous record, um, it's it's well obviously it's it's called super folk and and it's folkier for sure. It's not like rootsy folk or traditional folk. That's why I called it super folk because I thought you know then I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I can add some analog synths and and you know electronic pads if I want to because it's not folk you know but um i guess it's the it's the the process that was the the folkiest part of it because i just worked from home in my pajamas with my wife uh she was there with our youngest daughter and and it was just organically done i would say you know i just didn't really think everything through like Till it was like the perfect thing. I just I just went along with whatever was was coming, and and I just played those simple chords. And and after four albums about you know what like the things that are 
wrong in this world. Um, you know, I used to write songs a lot about, you know, the way we treat the environment and wars and all that stuff. I thought maybe it's time for an album about love and, and things that are going right, you know. So you had written 20 French songs, but only two made it to the album. Can you tell us about what differs Montréal and Un Coup d'Orlou? Um, yeah, well, I, most of my life is happening in French. Um, but Do you I've, think in French? It depends. You know, it depends. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It, it depends sometimes. Not right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, most, but most of my life is happening in French. I went to French school, um, but I grew up in NDG, and it's a really bilingual uh, um, neighborhood. And so, um, you know, my, my mom's an Anglo. My dad's uh, is, 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 is not. So, uh, yeah, so I've been, you know, speaking English and French all my life, but um, mostly French. Although I think my musical influences were just always either instrumental or English. So um, maybe that's why I was drawn to that sound and, and I started to sing in, in English. But, um, but I like writing songs in French. It's just when I listen to myself singing in French, for some reason, it's I don't I don't feel it's as compelling, you know. But maybe that's all in my head. So yeah, I thought this album would be like 50-50, completely bilingual. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, after writing all all those songs in French, uh, I just I just kept those two. So I don't know what that says about my singing in French and all that. But um, that's that's how I felt. That's what I thought would make uh, the, the album, you know, the, the best uh, that I can do, you know. So I was watching the clip for Montreal, and I loved how you portrayed the multiculturalism in Montreal. Now I have to know, where's your favorite place to eat? Because you had so much diversity <laughs> yeah. with the food. So I thought you were going to ask me, like, where do you find all that appetite, <laughs> you know? Because I'm, I'm eating all the time. Yeah, I thought, we need something simple. And... Now that I don't live in Montreal anymore, um, it's been six years I, I left the city, and I wasn't sure <coughs> at first if, if I was going to stay, you know, uh, in, in the country or come back to, to the town. But um, now that I know that I'm going to stay where I'm at, um, I still feel like a Montrealer, you know, wherever I am. I mean, it's, it's a part of who I am. It's not where I live. And um, I thought about, you know, what do I miss the most? And it's, and it's those cheap dives with, with you know, uh, uh, all that diversity and food and, and all that stuff. That's what we don't have in the country, you know. The rest, I don't go out much. I, like the rest, I don't care, you know. But, uh, and, and, it's, and it's fine because when I come to Montreal, then I make a point of going to all these places that, you know, I used to take for granted. So, so it's fine. Um, my, f I don't have a favorite place to eat though. It's just like I have. I, well, yeah, if it's good, it's good, you know. So um, I have. I, I guess I would have a few favorite places, you know. So yeah. And um, okay, can you tell me the top three? Uh, <laughs> well, I need to know. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you. Well, because there's so many good places. Um, I, I really can't because because it wouldn't be fair to the other places you're right, that you're right. I I it depends on the day you know yeah. sometimes I feel more like getting getting soup and sometimes I want to get you know uh, 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 something else yeah. so I, I guess I'm thinking about soup right now <laughs> so back to the album I love you more was the first song on the album but it was the last song that you had yeah. written can you tell us about what the song means to you. Um, well, it's, uh, it, I think I put it first because it really, it really depicts what super folk is. It, it starts and it's those simple two chords, you know, G and C, like millions of songs have only those two chords. And, and it was just, it just came so simply. And, um, and, and it's, it's a love song that I'm singing to my wife. Uh, we've been together 12 years now. Um, and um, it, it, I just, I wrote it in like 
five minutes. And then she came down in the studio and, and I had her, you know, listen to it. And she was just like, oh, that's my favorite song now. And so I knew I had to put it on the, on the album. And uh, everybody's asking uh, who's playing the harp on that one. But, and, and it's me, because it, it, it's the first time that I you know, uh, um, play, play the harmonica on a recording. And uh, I had to save it from the demo because I couldn't, I couldn't do any better when I actually uh, re-recorded the song in, uh, in the proper way. So yeah, it's the, it's the demo version of the harp that is there. Um, we were talking about earlier about how you have your own studio and you produce other artists. Can you tell us about the difference when it comes to producing other artists versus producing yourself? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, first of all, I, I just love making music. So it's, it's, it's the same love and, and it's, it's, it's as much fun to, to produce other artists. Um, and it's, it's like I always worked alone in the past. But um, when I built this new studio, I thought I want to have people over and work with other people and collaborate and, and all that stuff. So, so that's the main reason why I did this. Um, but working as a, a producer is great because, you know, the fun part of, of, of this music thing is the actual music. And that's the part you do when you're a producer. And the hard part, you know, is, is going out and trying to, you know, make people aware that you exist and that your music is there for them to, to listen to and try to sell it and try to push it and to get some airplay on the radio and, and, you know, compete with other artists. And there are so many, you know, and so many are great and talented. And it's so that's the really tough part, which is sometimes deceiving, you know. And, uh, and so when you're producing for others, you don't have to do that. You just hand them their tracks and you're just like... Good luck with that, you know, and then you go on to the next project and you and you the next day you're still playing guitar and, and making music. And so that's what, you know, that's what I really, really appreciate about being a producer. And how do you balance um, family life versus career life? Well, I guess one thing that I did is, is have my studio at my house. Yeah. So then even if I work a lot, you know, I, I get to see my kids and, and they get to act, at least hear me because, you know, sometimes I make a lot of noise down there. But, um, yeah, and, and it's fun because my wife, she, she, she enjoys having people over. So there's always, you know, musicians over and we, they come, they, they eat with us. And it's just, it's, I think, yeah, that was, that was the way for me to do it is um, have it in the house and, and just include the whole family in the process. My wife, she's, she's helping a lot with my... Uh, you know, everything, promotion and everything. So, uh, it's, so it's great, you know. Just, and do you see music um, arising in your children? Oh, yeah. Um, we got a couple of pianos at, at the house. And, and, and my, um, my daughter, she really likes singing and playing on the piano. She's 10 now. She's, uh, she, and she, I mean, she's, she's got a good ear and, and she's, she's doing great. Uh, she took piano lessons, but at some point she decided she just wanted to learn on her, her own. And um, why well, I couldn't argue with that because that's what I did, you know. So I don't know that I would want them to be, you know, musicians or anything. I, I mean, unless they want to and they really want to. Um, but I'll always, you know, be supportive of whatever they decide they want to do. Because if there's one thing that's the most important um, um, about, you know, choosing a career and everything is, is really choosing something you love because that's like, um, it, it's a, life is short, but it, it could be long if you're doing something you, you, you're not enjoying. Because even, you know, picking music, which I love, I don't only do things I, I enjoy through uh, the, the day, you know, so if I can't imagine having a job that I hate it, like, oh, ugh. What's, what's something that you want your fans to know that they don't know about you already? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I'm like, I don't necessarily, like, I don't, I don't talk about myself all that, well, I'm pretty open and I just, I'll say anything, but um, I, I just don't go out much and, and, and talk about myself, so um, there, there's probably a lot they don't know, but, um, but I'm a pretty simple person uh you know I don't do anything extravagant like uh I don't I don't know I, I 
at, at my house, I do the dishes, you know, and uh, <laughs> and I mop the floors. I mean, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, and before I let you go, <laughs> he mops the floors. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, um, so I know, like, the album came out on March 4th. So what can we expecting, can, what can we expect from you next? Um, well, obviously, um, a tour. Because I, I still enjoy uh, playing in front of, uh, of an audience and, and playing for an audience. Um, it's this, this super folk album, I think, is, is, is well suited to, um, well, for, for the first time, let me put it this way. For the first time, uh, by choice, I will be uh, putting on a solo tour because, you know, it's it's because I think this music it's gonna work well with this music. So it's gonna be my first solo tour, um, and um, and I want to play, you know, for smaller in smaller venues. Mm -hmm. Also, intimate. more intimate. I think that's what we need today, you know, because um, we like seventy five percent of what what we're experiencing is like through a, a, a screen of some some sort, and and I think it's it's we got we need this proximity. We need to be, to I don't know. We need to spend it's some human energy. time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's 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 what I'm that's what I want want to do for this tour in the fall. Awesome. Well, thank you for sitting with us. I can't wait to purchase Super Folk. And you guys, make sure to get your copy of it. We have Ian Kelly here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs>